Question, I'm going to ask you what is an obvious question to a philosopher of biology, why philosophy of biology, but I'd like you to focus really in two um, explanatory directions. On the one hand, which seems to be the most obvious, how philosophy can help biology, because a lot, a lot of biologists uh, are going along in life and uh, they never need a philosopher. I, my undergraduate and graduate training uh, was in philosophy, my doctor's in neuroscience, uh, and even though I've loved philosophy and did as, a, as an undergraduate, I never related the two. I, even, <laughs> I never thought I needed to have my philosophy interest in biology. And then also to go in the reverse explanatory direction and ask, is biology then helpful in, in some of philosophy's uh, uh, issues? So my response would be uh, uh, this, the, the same response that Thomas Kuhn, a philosopher of science who wrote uh, uh, Structure of Scientific Revolutions and famously argued that science is structured in these little units called paradigms or research programs that change over time in ways that aren't as cleanly connected as we previously thought. We make huge uh, jumps, shifts from one way of doing science to another that can be problematic for thinking about science as this cohesive, uh, continually cumulative knowledge generating project. Um, so in that book, he uh, famously, and I think rightly argues, that scientists are doing philosophy at certain points in the scientific project. Uh, namely, when they're building up a new uh, paradigm or research program, there's certain elements of that, like metaphysical principles, which could be things like definitions of terms and defining, you're doing philosophy, right? When you're uh, stipulating definitions for things. Uh, so think about when uh, scientists came up with research programs like, like phylogenetic systematics or evolutionary systematics or numerical taxonomy, uh, they have to define key terms, monophyletic group, species, higher taxa, that's philosophy, right? Um, and so you're gonna be doing it at cer a certain point when you're engaging in certain sorts of science. Um, so if you're going to be doing it, you might as well do it well. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> look at research in, from philosophers uh, that have already been wrestling with these issues. There's already, for example, a long ongoing debate about uh, the right way to classify things, natural kind theory, uh, even specifically the right way to define species in philosophy mm -hmm. of biology. Mm -hmm. So why not tap into that literature, engage? And when scientists do do that, they tend to have uh, richer, better sort of ways out of those, those conceptual uh, puzzles. Um, now in the other direction, with respect to how uh, uh, science has made uh, substantive impacts on philosophical problems, uh, I'll go back to Kuhn. And he has this problem of uh, trying to figure out how best to shift over to a new scientific paradigm in his philosophy of science. And he famously said it was just kind of like a random sort of, uh, to some extent, random, uh, rational, but not uh, based on objective sort of reason sort of shift. And it's just kind of a mess how you get from one research program to another in science. Now this philosopher of biology, David Hull, uh, he, by looking carefully at the practice of systematic biology, found that systematic biologists have been not in a single paradigm for a very, very long time. Um, since the, you know, Darwin's inclusion, the inclusion of Darwinian evolutionary biology into taxonomy and the generation of multiple different ways of doing taxonomy. And they've been getting along relatively fine um, and making discoveries about uh, uh, the tree of life and so forth. And so he proposed in a book of his that well, maybe you don't need to actually switch from one research program to another in a big transition in science. Maybe just generating multiple research programs can produce competition that then produces better science. Mm. It's kind of like an economics model of producing scientific theories where instead of uh, all scientists in the field getting on board with one way of doing it and then marching on, you just have this diversity and they're just fundamentally not going to agree on certain things, but then that puts them in a competition to produce better science. Mm. And so since Hull you know, really carefully looked at taxonomy, said, well, look, I can solve this philosophy of science problem. Namely, 
the problem is thinking that it's a problem. Right? <laughs> How about the use of uh, the way of thinking of philosophy of biology to various sets of, of social issues, whether we deal with uh, sex and gender, race, um, ecology, healthcare. There's a whole set of issues that are biologically based mm -hmm. uh, that have uh, you know, high impact on society and a lot of controversy. So what can philosophers of science bring to all of those debates? Yeah, I'll, I'll focus on race. So this is you know, a hot button topic in lots of uh, social discourse. Um, you know, specifically how to think about race, what you might be able to use it for in science. We've had a bad history uh, with, with using it in a biological way in the past, um, which has shifted us over to a non-biological way of thinking about race in a lot of uh, endeavors, especially medicine. But, um, you know, focusing on different uh, techniques in philosophy of biology of defining taxa, like shifting over to a purely genealogical way, or uh, a, a relativistic, not relativistic, but relative essence way, relational essence way, um, can deal with some of the concerns that people have, like of thinking that there are these stereotypical essential properties associated with being of a particular race. Like, no, 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 no. Philosophers of biology, when they talk about essences, biological essences now, they're mostly talking about relational essences. So um, how you related, like family relations, genealogical relations, relations to a geographic origin, and when you think about racial classification that way, you cannot tie yourself to the problems of the past and still have this really quite useful biological way of defining racial groups that then end up having you know, uh, useful aspects in say medicine, drug development, finding a little frequencies you weren't able to find before. Um, so bringing in more contemporary ways of thinking about things like essences from philosophy of biology uh, can have you know, positive payoffs.